Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with one more Christmas tag for Ellen Hudson's Feminine Tag series. Every year, my friend Ellen does a series of tags and I am paired up with Carissa Wiley today. We're both using this as our inspiration. This was the image we were given to use as our takeoff. And I wanted to use this cute little set from MFT, new Stacy Yakula designs with darling, darling, oh my gosh, like tooth hurting, sweet little penguins. This little guy was my favorite out of the set. So I decided to make my tag with him. And I'm using some ink tense watercolor pencil for the penguin. And I'm gonna use other things for the other parts, parts of the card. But the thing about ink tents is that for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part, they're permanent when dry. If you're painting something where you want the main image to be colored and then not bleed out into the background, because I'm going to do a wreath background around this, then you kind of need to have something that's not going to move if you accidentally touch it. And that's where ink tents has one of its best features is it's hopefully not going to move anywhere. So I'm going to, in addition to using ink tense pencil, I'm going to use also a little Daniel Smith watercolor. And this is from one of the sets, it's the Colors of Inspiration set. And I'm going to use you know, a little bit of color in the shadows on his cheeks. And the reason that I'm not using ink tense pencil for this is that ink tense pencil also gets more intense because it's ink, it's not actually watercolor. That's why it dries differently than watercolor. But it also is not going to give me this light, light color. And I wanted just barely any color there, just a shadow, just a hint of it in the white areas of my little penguin. And with my brush and a little bit of water, I can also soften those edges out a lot more than I can with ink tents. And if I get too much pencil on there, with a clean brush, I can just lift that up. I wanted to add a little bit of that craft kind of color to, to this um, since it was in the inspiration piece. So I'm using two kind of yellowish crafty-ish types of colors of Inktense pencil to create the scarf. And I decided to just kind of blur the color together and just paint right over the whole things. And then give a little bit of color into the, the wreath itself, the serpentine green. And then I wanted to create a wreath around my little penguin. And you could sit and draw it and get yourself in all kinds of trouble. But this, just giving myself that general circle, gives me an area that I can follow along and figure out where my branches are going to be. If you've ever made wreaths yourself, then you know that the branches kind of bend and twist around the the wire that you wire them onto, that you attach them to. And you want to do the same thing here. Treat each little section as though it's a branch. And in the inspiration piece, there were all these branches that kind of hung out. So it was not a perfectly round one. There were like little branches flopping outward. So you can create them in different directions. And just paint it first with a little bit of the, the pigment color and then go over it with some water. Let it water out, let it soften. You can always add more, but it's kind of nice to just let it be soft and washy. So here I'm starting with a little heavier lines and then going in with water and just mushing it around a little bit. I just want a hint of that to reflect the, the loose kinds of, of little wreath things that there were on the, the inspiration piece. And I am going to post that over on my blog. So if you want to use that as an inspiration, you want to see it more and better than you can here on the video, then please go over and check that out. And I'd be happy to share that with you. And I'd love if you make something with that, I'd love to see what you do as well and what that inspiration does to, uh, to inspire you to make something beautiful. And I know it's the holiday season and it's kind of getting late to be making things, but we still need to make tags, right? And this one is the cutest thing going. The whole series of tags is going to be on Ellen Hudson's blog because she posts them all over there each day for the first, I believe it's the 12 days of the beginning of December. So we are on December 2nd. So that means we have lots more to go. 
Now with the adding of red in here, I kind of waited for it to dry, but you can see some of them got a little bit mushy. So you can decide whether you like the mushy look or whether you want something a little bit, I don't know, firmer in terms of the dots. I didn't wait quite long enough to have firm dots on that left-hand side. But now I wanted to add a little bit more of that craftish yellowish background around the outside edges too. But you know, most people would probably get another circle to high and try to line it up and make a perfect circle around there. Well, you know, it's me and it's Christmas time and it's a tag, so I'm going quick. So I kind of sketched in that outside line in the, the watercolor pencil and watercolored it. And then after it was dry, I just went around it with a pen to make it look like loose stitching. And then even added the end of the stitch with a little bow on it which I thought was kind of fun. I layered it onto a piece of black cardstock that was also cut out in a circle and tied it up on my package. Now, you probably have never painted watercolor on craft paper before, right? Well, look at how cute this is. I'm just making little brush strokes to make leaves that match a little bit of the leaves that were in my, my little wreath on my tag. So you can custom do your gift wrapping based on the tag that you've created. Is that not, does that not make you look like you are a person who's in control of Christmas crafts? If you show up somewhere with a gift that is personalized in such a way and made to really match the tag and the gift and everything all together, I just thought that was really a cute, cute way to present this little tag. And as soon as I saw that big blank craft background, underneath of my tag, I went, you know, I've got to, I got to decorate that. And I'm glad that I left the camera on so you could see that you can paint very lightly with watercolor onto craft wrapping paper. So fun. And I think this was actually just kind of some, it wasn't wrapping paper, wrapping paper, which can be slicker. So this was more of a, uh, a matte kind of surface. So it took the paint quite nicely, but it let it also be really loose and kind of melted into it. Here's another one, another card that I made in Copic marker with that same stamp. And I drew everything else that's on there except for the little penguin. And how did I do that? Well, I did the Copic glass class. And this is one of the lessons in the Copic glass class. And I applied some of the same things to creating a, a glass jar for my little penguin and to create all his little little candy canes in there. It's way advanced and all that sort of thing, but if you are somebody who loves to do crazy Copic things, that's a little something. I put a bee in your bonnet to go learn how to color glass at art-classes.com. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Go make something beautiful.